we're seeing this a lot that new churches are started and overnight you have 2,000 people or 4,000 people. Very quickly. In many cases, those churches are the result of a shallow ecclesiology. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian truths in an increasingly secular world. Let's talk a little bit about the Great Commission, um, obviously Matthew 28, 19, and then also maybe Acts 1, 8, um, that, that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, um, and then that command from Jesus in relation to a church's ongoing efforts to plant other churches, like-minded churches, maybe in their community or even wider community, even across the globe, supporting missionaries and all the rest. You've been a church planner before, and that interests me. Mm-hmm. That 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 you've you you started a church. Um, if I if I'm right, it was just a storefront, yeah. And then eventually grew into a larger congregation. The Lord really blessed it. Even right now, we are supporting and going to be sending out um, uh, some leaders to to plant a church here in this city in a different part of the city. Uh, a like-minded congregation, and I wonder if you could talk about that just briefly. Um, you know, what's the impetus for that, uh, mm. for the church planning effort? What would you like to see take place in church planning efforts, not only in our church but maybe other uh, churches across the country? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, um, the impetus is is uh, evangelism and discipleship. It is fulfilling the Great Commission. It's obeying the instruction of our Savior. So that's the motivation for it. The the zeal that fuels it is the desire to do that, to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ in the way that he commissioned us to do. We believe that churches plant churches. So it's not individuals planting churches, but it it is the church or organizations. Mm -hmm. It's the church planting churches. Mm -hmm. Um, When when you see the New Testament spreading of the gospel and and the churches coming into existence, there was apostolic oversight. And the apostles, of course, are not, not on the scene anymore, but the churches that were the result of, of those efforts, New Testament is completed, churches are established. Now the church replicates itself or, or gives birth to new churches in other parts of the world. I think that that's the pattern. What, what motivates it as well as, as, as the commission of, of our Lord is the knowledge of the need. So. As you said, Josh, we're about to start a new church in Katy, a man by the name of Darren Roberts. Darren's going to be the, the planting pastor of that church. The motivation for it was, it's an, city of Houston is a large city, you know, over four million people in, the, in Harris County, and there are not that many churches that represent what we would love to see in local churches. So you talk about expository preaching, high view of church membership, discipline of its members, Mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. There's always a need for more of those kinds of churches with a population of four million people. We looked at Southwest Houston and we see a need in that area. So that's what what motivates it. What are the things that you would look for and sort of ideal, you know, pastors, leaders, to plant a church. You, you've done it yourself, yeah. and, I, and, and from your testimony, the Lord really blessed it, and obviously the Lord has blessed your ministry uh, here as well. And so you mentioned the essentials, expository preaching, high view of Scripture, all the rest. Yeah. What, what, what would you say, um, you know, th- this, is, this is the ideal person to maybe go out and plant a church? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I know what that I- ideal person would be. I, I think I would, I think a few things come to my mind. One, firm commitment to, to a New Testament concept of the church. So, mm. so everything we've just talked about, firm commitment to those principles. Someone who understands that, that the church planting process is going to be difficult, and he's prepared for that, his family's prepared for that, his wife's prepared for that, because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to require patience in all likelihood. If, if what you're committed to is a New Testament concept of the church, then it's likely not going to be one of these that, it, that explodes overnight. Often t- we're, we're seeing this a lot, that new churches are started, and overnight you have 2,000 people or 4,000 mm, people. Very quickly. In many cases, those churches are the result of a shallow ecclesiology. Mm. And, and, and that's, that's why they are exploding at the very outset, because it's, it's more about something attractional, offering something that, that, that isn't very deep, doesn't plow deep, that doesn't have a well-set foundation. 
So when, when your standards are going to be New Testament standards, the church might not grow as quickly as, as some others would. So are you prepared for a very patient process, vetting people with respect to a sound testimony? We believe the church is made up of believers only. So does this person have a clear testimony? Have they followed the Lord in believers' baptism? We're going to have a very clear doctrinal statement, a very clear description of the church's leadership and how it functions. Are you willing to be submissive to something like that? Are you willing to embrace the, the doctrinal positions of the church? Are you willing to submit yourself to the leadership of the church? We, we, we want a plurality of eldership and these men have to be qualified. So before a new church start is standing on its own, it needs to be under the authority of a church with that kind of eldership, with that kind of, of mature leadership. You're leading a, a baby, so to speak, a, a new start into a, into a season where it's ready to stand on its own. So are you going to be patient while the Lord raises up that qualified leadership? All sorts of issues that make it a long-term project instead of just something that's short-term. So, so that man, whoever that planting pastor is going to be, he has to be a man who, who embraces that from his own heart. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. I, I want a process that's submissive to a healthy, mature congregation that's going to oversee us as we get started. I submit myself joyfully to a process that's going to raise up qualified leadership. I submit myself joyfully to a process that's going to vet members in such a way that, that they are, we, we are confident to the degree we can be. They are genuine believers. We're gonna have a high and clear doctrinal standard for the church and, we, and all those sorts of things a man has to be committed to at the outset. Well, what did you do to um, say, see the church grow? You obviously want, want to see souls saved and people discipled for the glory of God and for the good of, good of, good of yep. the church. Um, what did you do to um, see a, a group of people that started in a storefront and yeah. grow to a healthy congregation? So we had five families that we started with, 25 people in a, in a storefront in a little Texas community and, uh, and right next door to two bars. I mean, mm -hmm. literally 10 yards away. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 was, it was the only place in town that would allow us enough space to grow mm -hmm. in terms of, of adding people. And what we did are the very same things that we're doing right now in a church of 800 people. It's been, been no different. Mm. The, the work of ministry never changes. You may do a few little things different, like in terms of advertising or things like that to let people know that you're there, but the, but the ministry itself never changes. So we were gathering together on the Lord's Day for fellowship, mutual exhortation and ministry, Bible teaching, singing songs of praise together, in public worship and then verse by verse exposition of the scriptures and preaching. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And we were in that storefront for four years, I think, and the church grew to, I don't remember for sure, Josh, 100, 120 people, something like that, in that storefront. We mm. were, it was, it was maxed out. Were you evangelizing around the area? Of course, yeah, you're, you're sharing the gospel as, as you're given opportunity. But, but as you know, even here at Founders, we're, we're not big into evangelism Programs. Programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's every member living as a believer, which means as we're going, we're sharing our faith. We're coming into contact with people who need Jesus and we're sharing the gospel. That's what we did there. And probably before the first year, the building was maxed out. And then we had to be patient for another three because we didn't have the resources to buy property and build a building. And then three years later, there was a man who wanted to sell a piece of property to us at a cost that we could afford. Uh, he came down on his price by 75% in order to make that possible for us. And we purchased that land and then built our first building. And by the time I left, almost 10 years later, we were on our third building project and mm -hmm. the Lord had, had grown his church. So we weren't great strategists. We didn't have mm -hmm. some great church planting strategy. We just tried to practice what you see with respect to New Testament church ministry. And the Lord blessed it. And that's what we're going to do with this new church plant that we're doing right now. We've got a, a man who's gifted, you know, called by God, who evidences that with gifting, has a heart for ministry that is, is vibrant and zealous. And we're going to, by, by God's grace and, and according to God's will, we're gonna surround him, Lord willing, with men who match him with that same kind of calling and giftedness, but not the same roles. They're gonna complement each other. 
And, uh, and so in time, the Lord will grow that church the way he means to, mm-hmm. and we'll be satisfied with that. So, and thankful for that. So, so that's our, our uh, approach to it. Churches planting churches, New Testament church life, no compromise, which includes a plurality of leaders that are qualified. And then you practice the things God's given you to practice and he grows his church. The Lord builds his church. Jesus builds his church. Mm -hmm. We're not church builders, we're servants. And he builds his church. And, And that's our approach. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.